In this video, we'll have a look at um, how we can process changes to the list control. Um, we're going to use the detail view, but we're never going to look at the detail view. We're just going to do it programmatically. So here we have a list control, and we've got uh, last name and their status. And um, if I refresh this, you'll see that active and inactive buttons, these are two buttons and a synchronized button, they're both uh, both lit up because we haven't made a choice in the list yet. But as we make a choice in the list, you'll see the inactive button lights up, but the uh, active button is disabled and is inactive, so that changes. And then what we can do is uh, click on a button, and uh, that'll change the status to whatever button we clicked on, and then we can synchronize that. And of course, we can make that change in a number of different places. Inactive changes to active, and then we can synchronize everything. Save those changes off to the database. So let's go and have a look to see how we did this. So here's our list. There's our three buttons, active, inactive, and synchronize. We're doing everything with functions. It makes things uh, nice and easy. Uh, very easy to follow. So we'll have a look at the list control first. We're selecting a last name and status from uh, TBL customers, uh, where status is, is not equal to, uh, to a null value, or an empty value. And what we're going to do here is we'll go into our list events and we're just calling one event from the list control on select um, and we're calling our function called list reset buttons and we're passing in the value of status so we get that by this dot selection data zero status we get that in our more help it tells you how to get out the uh, the data itself and our status is one of the fields in here so we're just passing in the value of uh, of that field and then in the buttons themselves, in the on-click event, we are calling um, another function called update list. And this is where we actually make a change to the list itself. And we're setting the value that we want to uh, change it to. So this button's going to be active. This one's calling exactly the same function but uh, we're, we're setting its value to inactive, so we're just passing a, a parameter along with that. Synchronized just came along with the uh, detail view. And then in the detail view itself, we did set this up with the detail view of last name and status. Now, if you have a lot of uh, fields in your list control, you really only need the one that you're updating. Uh, so we have status here, and we set this all up with the genies. And uh, what we're doing is we're using the uh, save click code to uh, change the values and to um, to update the list from the UX controls. So we're setting the value of status and then we're essentially clicking the save button, although we're just running the code from the save button. So let's have a look at our JavaScript functions. First we'll have a look at the reset list buttons. Uh, list reset buttons uh, function where we're passing the status. So this is what happens is every time we click on a row in the list control. We're getting a pointer to our button, uh, active and inactive buttons, and we're setting up the uh, the classes for these uh, two buttons. Now I'm using the iOS 7 class, so either one of those two classes for button or button disabled is going to be a value for the classes themselves. So um, we're setting up an active list. It's called a class list. So we've got a pointer to our active button here. Uh, we're setting its value uh, d dot disabled equal to true because we're turning that off. So if we're passing in the, the value of of stat of active to this um, to this function, that means we want to uh, disable our active button. And we want to make sure that our in, uh, inactive button is uh, enabled properly. So our active button is going to be disabled. The class list is equal to our inactive class list. And you can see here our inactive uh, class list, uh, inactive list is set up to uh, to hold uh, two values. It's an array, iOS 7 button, and button disabled, which is what uh, alpha gives it. So we're just passing that along, and we're setting up the class names for this um, this object as well. 
uh, iOS 7 button and button disabled, and then that's exactly what uh, what Alpha does themselves as well. And then we're setting up our inactive button, disabled equals false, which means it's going to be enabled, so we can click it. But we want its look to change as well, so we're setting up a class list of the, for the active list. And the active list is just the iOS 7 button, and we're passing in a class name as of iOS 7 button. Now, if we're passing in a status of inactive, we're just going to do the opposite. And then if we're passing in a no value, which really can't happen in this case because of our filter, but you could take the filter off. So a default would be enabling both buttons. So that's what happens every time we click on a, uh, a row in the list. Now, what happens when we click one of the buttons? Well, uh, we're, remember we're passing in a status of either inactive or active. So we're going to set the value for our field, this control here, which is our detail view control. We're going to set the value of that control to whatever status we pass in. And then we're going to go and get our list control, and then we're going to update the list control from the, uh, the list from the UX controls. And then we're going to go and call our reset buttons because we've already because we've changed. So we're going to call this again, but with our new status. So this will reset the status once again. So let's go and have another look at this. Active. So our inactive button is disabled. Active button is enabled. I can change that. That changes over. And I can synchronize. I'll just do this one as well. And this one, and then I can synchronize. And I think that's a really interesting process with uh, with buttons and uh, a list list control. Thanks for having a look.